I present to you the backbone of my interplanetary vessel. We're using Urkel's docking clamps for all the, uh, it's going to donk, uh, donk? We're going to dock several modules to this after we get it into orbit, and it's going to be one big interplanetary vessel. Um, we got we got a protractor and a cathane controller on the side. We got a mech jeb unit there. We got an isomap sat there. Uh, let's see, that's a docking node place. Those are structural fuselage. Same thing here. On this one, we've got a tiny antenna, a one of these uh, that you don't have to point anywhere antennas, and we got a giant interplanetary dish on this side. Um, we got a cathane converter. These are cathane tanks? No wait, the ones down here are cathane tanks at the bottom. Then we got a uh, cathane detector and a pump for the cathane. We got cathane tanks, like I said, and more docking clamps, more structural fuselage and donking, donking, docking clamps. Uh, then we got these two tiny engines, which are only supposed to be used to get us up there. And the idea with this thing is that we get it up there, we attach a large fuel tank or a couple large fuel tanks to the bottom and with large engines. Um, then on the sides, we have uh, a couple uh, rovers, landers, that kind of thing to land at planets and possibly return, hopefully return because we got this cathane stuff to uh, process cathane into more fuel to keep going. Um, and then at the very top, I want to put more crew on the top, um, cause I think it would be nice to have more crew than just one member, uh, cause as much as this stuff is remote control stuff, we, we want a crew too. Yeah. I also got to figure out how to get this thing into orbit because with all these little gizmos on the sides, this thing is actually quite massive. Um, you know, it doesn't. Yeah, it does look like much, and it is much. I have no idea how I'm going to get this into orbit, so... Here goes nothing. Wish me luck with that. And now, I present to you the Icarus Core. I uh, finished the main station. I added, um, I actually forgot to add some RCS tanks. So there's an extra node at the top with some RCS tanks. There's some RCS thrusters on the bottom and on the top. And I finished the launch stage, uh, which you can see is these giant rockets around it. Um, unfortunately, I already tested it and took one to orbit. Um, I intended to do that test live, but two things prevented me from doing that. It is so laggy to launch this thing. My computer can barely handle it with McJeb handling the launch for me. I'd fly it manually, but I just can't because uh, my computer lags too hard. Um, and then the other thing is, once I finally got this thing to stay intact on the pad, it was strong enough to stay intact to go into orbit. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to, um, the first couple of tests, disintegrate mid-flight before even getting to orbit. Turns out this thing actually gets into orbit with a surprisingly large amount of fuel left. Um, I was not expecting that. Let me show you. Assuming this thing can even pull off the launch with me recording, because it was going at two frames per second when I was launching it without recording, and now it's at one frame per second, and I bet it's not even going that fast. All right, let's see. Um, so this is the path we're taking up to orbit. Uh, you can see, start at 10 kilometers, end at 70. And we're, yeah, like I said, I engage the autopilot. Uh, we're going to 72 kilometers. And so we're all set to go. So as you can see, it's extremely laggy. Uh, that sound is weird. I love the sound of these engines, though. 
Oh yeah, get ready for explosions. Don't worry, that's normal. Uh, those SRBs, uh, the way they're discarded, they end up impacting the side of the tanks, and because the speeds involved are so high, they end up exploding every time. Uh, but they don't damage the main craft, and that's the important thing. Unfortunately, this craft has a tendency to wobble around, as you can see it doing right now, until we ditch some mass later, um, which we will do in a minute or so, or, yeah, in a couple of seconds. Unfortunately, with how much it lags, you can't really see the separation, but you can see that it is a clean separation. Also, it just turned on the gravity turn indicator, and I always turn on the RCS when it starts the gravity turn because this thing's a bit rickety, and I want to make sure it actually makes it up. So, that's, that's why that went on. And I'm trying to change the perspective of the view right now, you know, right click and drag to turn the camera, but it's not actually, oh, now it is. Well, for a moment there, it wasn't actually letting me do that. Anyhow, you can see uh, quite an interesting little ship we have here. Little, I say. Um, let's see, so we're almost to main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff comes at about T plus 126 seconds, I think it was. Uh, at least that's what it was last time. Or at least I think that's what it was last time, I don't remember. Let's see, we're going longer than that, so either I misremembered or it's different time. Oh, maybe it was T plus 136. Or maybe it didn't have a 6 in it at all. Let's see, where is it? I'm looking for the thing that says uh, main engine cutoff time. Is it not? Maybe it doesn't even show it. It just shows time that you're going up. Huh. Oh, yeah. RCS off. Uh, we're just wasting it by this point. Uh, last time I had more RCS remaining. Also, uh, you might have noticed this is, well, you can't really see it because the ascent stats are in the way but uh, let me rotate around and right click on the crew hatch or not where, where is it there it is empty this is a crewless command module using the comm system uh, luckily we get into orbit before we ever have to worry about uh, losing contact with mission control so that's that's pretty cool don't you think that we can just get into orbit with this oh there we go full blast circularizing our orbit now. I'm going to click show path on the map and so you can see the comms path between KSC and us. They're going to lose control, uh, lose track of us shortly after we achieve orbit. Also, as you can see, uh, this thing very narrowly avoids running out of fuel when we get up here. Look at that, 36.7 liters left in these tanks. This tank is completely full. And then the main core of my ship is uh, made of 400 liter fuel tanks. I think six of them, I'm not sure. So we got a decent amount of fuel up to start. We got two Kethang tanks ready to be filled. We got, you know, all the docking clamps. We got the ISA map sat. We got the, uh, what do you call it, the engineer thing, this thing, uh, ooh, the ascent autopilot is in the way to show you, it's the, what do you call it, it's the planetary rendezvous system, uh, what, adjust, no, don't adjust, uh, planets, so you can see, uh, what, you know, I don't actually know what these icons mean. I know that's uh, phase angles. Is that what they call it? I don't know. Uh, I know it's the angles that you have to look out for to determine when to go to these other planets. But I can't figure... Oh, okay, okay. So this chart is the angle that you want to be at to uh, go to these other places. And then this is the angle they're currently at. So that one's adjusting quite a bit. And then delta V required to go there. Oh, we just lost radio contact. So this thing is, you can't do anything with it. Uh, because we're not, wait, no, don't, 
don't click that. I don't know what that does, so I don't want to click it. And then we have the moons. We can turn the moons and planets off. And we can turn show delta V on and off. Tracked delta V. Oh, so it wasn't tracking, even though... Oh, well, whatever. What's this button do? Is that a manual? That's a manual. Okay, let me close that. How do I close this? <sighs> Go away. Drag it off screen. Click the button again. There we go. Cool. The isomap sat is online. Of course, all we're going to get is a very narrow band of equa equatorial. Am I saying the right word? Blah, 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 blah. Current position. Anomalies. Curval PD. What? Hold on, let me get McJev out of the way. Name Sun, Satellites Phi, Five, Sphere of Influence Infinity. Why is it just. It's It automatically wants me to look at the Sun? Show raw data off. Show raw data. Store raw data. Oh, no, 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 no. Turn that back off. No, I don't want. I don't want the data. Yeah. Okay. Anomalies off. Current position off. KSC positions off. Okay. There we go. I wanted to show you though, um, I'm quite impressed with my rocket design. Um, let's see. Ascent autopilot. Stats. Uh, let's close that out of the way. But if you look at this, okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Main engine cutoff at T plus 269. Oh, see, there was a 26 in there. I just thought it was earlier. I guess it doesn't count main engine cutoff until you actually get into orbit. I don't know. But anyhow, total delta V expended, 4384. Uh, gravity loss is 30.9%. I think every other design I've had has had gravity losses above 40%. Uh, drag loss is 20. Steering loss is 1.4. That's about average. Um, unfortunately, we're going into the dark side of the planet, so I can't show you the... Uh, this thing up close very well. Um, speed gain 47.8%. That's that's nice. I like this. Mass to orbit 84.7 tons. That's that's a pretty good amount, don't you think? You know, if I'm able to get this into orbit like this, I think I can do interplanetary stuff. I was I was if you know I hadn't tried designing rockets in the new game yet or in the new version, and. I just noticed I sound kind of sick, don't I? I sound like I have a cold, don't I? That's weird. Whatever. I don't, or at least not that I know of. Um, although now that I mention it, I do feel a little off. You don't care, though. You're just here for rockets. Rockets, 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 rockets. So, uh, I think... I think one of my next things I want to do uh, is I want to design more modules to attach to this thing and yeah and I want to park them into it into it that sounds kinda wrong I don't know maybe it does maybe it doesn't I don't know I never know yeah but there we go I want I also want to use the fuel out of this remaining bit I think I'll use these a little bit to you know the last last little bit out of these tanks to start going into a higher orbit and then I'll use most of this tank to get into that higher orbit and uh, the tanks in here to finish getting into that higher orbit and then I'll bring stuff up we'll go to the moon for some cathane mining to refuel Especially because hopefully by then uh, we'll have this big old giant engine module attached to the back, which will be cool. By giant engine module, I think it'll probably be like a few Nervas and a bunch of fuel tanks. Um, although I can also attach fuel tanks to other docking points. Apparently there's some bug with... Uh, well, okay, Urkel's docking clamp, if I remember correctly, doesn't allow fuel transfer. But Orda does, but Orda uh, isn't updated or is buggy or something. I need to look that up, but I hope I can make it work. I hope I can use all the fuel from different places and whatnot. At the very least, I think I can transfer cathane between things and have them convert and whatnot. I don't know. 
maybe, maybe not. I, you know, I'm new to the whole mod thing. I mean, I've done some basic mods before. I mean, not done, but used some basic mods before, but not much. Okay, thank you for watching and listening to me ramble on and on if you've gotten this far in the video. If you've gotten in this far in the video, then I thank you for watching and stuff. Eh, even if you haven't gotten this... what You wouldn't even hear me if you hadn't gotten this far, so what the hell am I talking to you for? Hey, you, who skipped half the video just to hear the ending. Go back and... Eh, I don't care. Thanks for watching, etc., etc. See you in space. I'm tired.